So let's move let's move outside to the wide receiver position, Brian. And this is the one where I mean I don't want to take a turn to negative town. That's not where I want to go. Uh, but we're going to talk about Dell Alexander. And look, for, on the face of it, he's bringing in some some great recruits. Uh, the the youth movement uh, at the wide receiver position is unbelievable. The problem is they're not getting on the field. The other issue is those guys aren't in a Notre Dame uniform because of Dell Alexander. Mm -hmm. uh, from everything that I can gather. So this is a big year for him because if those young guys are going to see the field, they're going to have to get coached up. And how, what is that going to look like? You know, are you going to, are you insistent on throwing the, 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 you know, the Bible at them and having to know everything chapter and verse, or is it going to be a situation where, Hey, this is what these guys do best. Here's how we need to get them involved. And is that all on Dell Alexander? So, mm -hmm. A lot of different things to talk about uh, with with Coach Alexander, Brian. So let me let me say what Coach Alexander's done a really good job with. Okay, start with positive. I like when, that. When he has a veteran group, he's been able to do a good job getting the most out of them. I think the issues this year with the wide receivers that played yes. was not a Dell Alexander problem. It was a that's fair offensive philosophy problem, right? Because one thing we've argued is Javon McKinley is open a lot more than people realize. Yeah. You know, we're, I'm having the same arguments with Javon McKinley that I had with with Notre Dame fans about Chase Claypool when they said, well, Notre Dame didn't have enough speed at receiver. I'm like, well, wait till the combine. We had the <laughs> exactly. same conversation with Miles Boykin. I'm like, yeah. I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm at the Cotton Bowl. I'm up high. I can look down and see everything. And I'm watching Miles Boykin smoke corners for on post routes. It should be for touchdowns and the ball doesn't come. That's not a wide receiver problem. That's not a separation problem. That's a quarterback problem. So I don't blame him for, for the – I think he's been able to – when guys are in this system for a while, they're able to develop and he's able to get veterans to play at a high level. Having said that, the issue that I have is that's 20 years ago, right? This is a, an era where young players are more ready to play than ever, but they're not usually guys that are walking the door and you don't need to coach them up kind of guys. The problem that Notre Dame has, and this isn't all Dell Alexander. Agreed. I'm confident in saying that Dell Alexander has a lot dictated to him. I agree as far with as what he's going to do. So the coaching aspect of it, there's some limitations to it. I think Coach Alexander needs to step up and, and use his voice more. Sure. He's a very experienced coach. Yep. I mean, you go back and look at his track record at Arizona State, his track record at Wisconsin. This is a guy that's produced some good receiving cores. He's a good football coach. I don't think he uses his voice enough. I think he allows things to be dictated to him and just kind of uh, ch chalks it up. I think he does a poor job of once the season starts of coaching younger players. He just kind of, these are my starters and this is who I'm working with and we'll worry about yeah. the young guys in the offseason. That's a yeah. poor philosophy. Right. That's on him. He's got to change that. Okay. Uh, and so those are some things I think he needs to do a better job with. Number one, the bigger issue for me with him is recruiting. Um, yes, he needs to get Kevin Austin and, and Braden Lindsay going as veterans, sure. but he also has to work his tail off to make sure Jordan Johnson and Xavier Watts are ready to go out and ball this year. Same with Lawrence Keith. Stop brushing guys aside and focusing on their limitations. Focus on the things they do, coach right. those things up and use them. He needs to do a better job of that, but he really needs to step it up in recruiting. And this is one of those things where people look at the receiver classes and say, well, they just signed a you know, top 10 receiver class. They got Lorenzo Styles and Deion right. Colsey and Right. True. They lost Deion Colsey initially because of a lack of contact. That's just a fact, right? I've talked to multiple sources down in Georgia. Deion Colsey's too classy to say this. He's too respectful. He comes from a great family. They are not going to bash Coach Alexander publicly because they are not that kind of people. I'll say it for them. <laughs> that was a, it wasn't the only reason. No, I know. There were other reasons, but that it's was a fact. The way you said it. That's a All these other coaches are talking to him every day, the Notre Dame yeah. receivers coach is just kind of like, well, he's already committed. That's not how recruiting works, no, number one. No, number two, not. you look at Lorenzo Styles. you know, Lorenzo Styles' primary recruiter was not Dell Alexander. It was Chip Long. Same thing with Jordan Johnson. I mean, I would argue that Dell Alexander was the third factor of co from a personal standpoint in Jordan Johnson picking Notre Dame. Um, and Dell Alexander had almost no impact on Xavier Watts committing to Notre Dame. So yeah. – you look at it and say, well, where's his role? I mean, look, we've talked to 
We had a guy at an event this week in a seven on seven event talking to some of the top hundred recruits. And they're like, yeah, I love coach Reese. He's a good guy. Blah, blah, blah. Well, what about coach Alexander? Who? I mean, that's kind of the reaction, yeah. you know, and that's bad. You know, uh, there was a, a top 250 receiver that Brian Kelly had been on the phone with. Tommy Reese had been on the phone with, and then it kind of got passed on to coach Alexander. And it's like, you haven't heard from them in a while. And you're just like, you know, what, what are you doing here? And, and there's a couple oh, receivers agree. here and there that'll say, I talk to coach Alexander all the time, but this is the point that I've always made because we we've heard this with other coaches in the past. Well, you know, I talked to this kid and he says he talk here's from all the time because the guy's focus on like five guys. Yeah. That's a problem. To recruit a position at receiver like Notre Dame, you got to have a bigger board. Yeah. And you got to treat all those guys like dudes. Yep. Right. I have from from talking to some people I had at a seven on seven event, Ryan Day's name is mentioned more from that's a head coach of Ohio State is mentioned right. more as far as I talk to him more. These are just receivers. Then I talk to the Notre Dame wide receivers coach whose only flipping job is to recruit wide receivers in Notre Dame. Mm. That's unacceptable. Yeah. I mean, Caleb Brown should hear from Dell Alexander on the regular. Yes. Right? C.J. Williams should have, and it's too late for that. I think that ship has pretty much sailed now. Same with Ted Aroa McMillan. That ship has sailed first. You're an L.A. guy. You're from Los Angeles. This was part of the reason you were brought in. And you can't even make a dent with a kid. I mean, there's pictures of C.J. Williams giving interviews talking about, you know, that they're that they're using an older photo and he's wearing a Notre Dame shirt, you know, but Notre Dame isn't even in the mix now. So I'm seeing this stuff and I'm saying, you know, and then you, you read the articles and then you talk to people that know these kids and you're like, yeah, Notre Dame just didn't really make a, much of a push for him. Well, Tommy Reese can't recruit every single receiver. Right. And that's, you know, and, and and as much as Chip Long got along, I mean, if it was just about Chip Long, Jalen McMillan's at Notre Dame. Right. Right. But it can't just be about the coordinator for every kid. You also have to have some situations where it, you need to be able to say, hey, um, we need the head coach involved. We need the receiver coach involved. And and that's where Notre Dame has fallen short. And that's and why they've had good, really good receiver classes. But here's the big thing, Vince. I'm tired of Notre Dame saying, well, look, we had a good class. Yes, but it should have been better. Right. It could have been better if you put in the work. You're Notre Dame. You're always going to get top players. You have to be the most incompetent staff ever, Ty Willingham, to, to, to not get good recruits at Notre Dame. Right. It's about whether or not you're willing to put in the work to have great classes yeah. at Notre Dame. Yes. And so that's the issue is and, and until Coach Alexander starts grinding on the recruiting trail, it's like he it's like he's really comfortable. And I and I don't like comfortable coaches because comfortable yeah. coaches tend to get lazy. They get lazy. Just say it. I would just say complacent. I don't okay. think it's about laziness. I think that because I think Dell Alexander works, but what is your work being geared towards? Right. Complacency is lazy to me, but that's me. That's to me, me yeah, I, I don't think – see, to me, I think laziness is I'm just sitting at the office, you know, eating Cheetos, watching TV. That's not what Coach Alexander is doing. It's okay. I'm going to focus more over here and not over here. Right. You know, and, and that's to me it's – it's, it's not putting enough emphasis on this very important part of your job. And I think to me that's why – yeah, you know, I don't view it as lazy, and I'd be willing to call a coach lazy if he was lazy. Okay, I'm just saying, I, I don't think that's the issue with Coach Alexander. Um, I think it's more about just not putting enough emphasis. But when your head coach doesn't put as much emphasis on recruiting in regards to his daily activity and and being involved, and you know, if you know the head coach isn't going to challenge you on your board every other day, like what happens at Ohio State, what happens at Clemson, what's happened at Oklahoma and, and Alabama. Then, then you're gonna be able to get away. Ah, you know, coach. You know, when when you have only talked to the coach every every once in a while about recruiting. Well, you know, we t we tried, but the kid wasn't interested. You think Brian yeah. Kelly's gonna go get look at the logs and do digging to find out if that was actually the case? No, no, he's not. And so, if you don't like recruiting necessarily, you don't love recruiting, then then you're not. Look, Chip Long loved recruiting. I, I, Mike Elko, I think, really likes recruiting, and that's why they're good at it. Ch Clark Lee liked getting recruits but i don't think he necessarily liked recruiting with the grind uh, of it. yeah yeah and so if you don't have a head coach that's forcing guys like that to recruit then you're gonna see this so that's why i say it's up to coach reese to be able to go to coach alexander and say hey look if you don't talk to cut caleb brown you know every other day at least we're gonna have to go into the boss man's office and have a conversation y you know what i mean i mean that's what you got to do i mean but the reality is head coach or 
you shouldn't have to do that, right? But that's what's needed. I mean, they've got to step it up and recover in this recruiting class because they're going to have another good recruiting class, a receiver. But we're going to look back again and say, but what if yeah. they would have gotten Caleb Brown? Sure. What if they would have got C.J. Williams? What you know? Don't don't complain to me about your lack of playmakers in three years when these guys are balling at other schools, and you could have had them if you just would have put in the work. Yep. And it's not admission. It's not an admissions problem. It's not. It's not that these kids don't care about academics. That is far from the truth with a lot of these kids. So, so that's kind of where I say it. For Coach Alexander, he's he's got to step it up. It's a big year for him on and off the field. He's got to step up. And if he doesn't, some 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 hard conversations need to be had.